Hi everyone, um, <clears throat> welcome to my video. So yesterday I um, watched this video by Rick Beato, um, and I missed a lot of points on a lot of freaking points. And if the video is about an hour and 30 minutes long, and it could have been a lot shorter. It was my initial um, video, and I think I went on on this unrelated, um, undestined train ride that uh, deviated from a lot of points that I was trying to make. It just ran around in circles, and quite frankly, I think it was a, it, it, you know I, I at the moment the video is private because I don't I didn't want anyone to really watch it because it's such a waste of time. It's, an, it's a waste of an hour and 30 minutes, on my opinion, because it, it didn't really contain a, any resourceful, um, supportive arguments, um, supportive uh, premises to, uh, um, reasons to support my own uh, thoughts. So hopefully this video um, is a lot more concise, is compact, and um, hopefully I can get my points, uh, my thoughts across uh, in a better fashion. So let's dive right in. I'm Rick Beato. We're going to try something new today. This video is on the history of the music business. And um, before I, I wanted to say this uh, before we started, the reason why I'm remaking this video in the first place is it's fun. You know, it's it's fun to, you know, try to understand what this person is talking about and. You know, it, it's it, 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 I I can't explain it. It's just fun, and it's fun to kind of like see my own uh, my own thoughts, uh, my own jumbled thoughts, um, get better. So, yeah, this is yeah. I, I just wanted to say that technology in two acts, Act One. Music is too easy to make. What do I mean by music is too easy to make? Let's just go back to the 1940s and 50s. Frank Sinatra used to get up in front of an orchestra and sing. So he's saying the reason why I think Rick, no, not the reason why I think, the reason why Rick brought Sinatra was Sinatra is a one take artist uh, with uh, recording wise. Um, and I think that's that's bringing in, that's um, basically gloss, uh, not glossing, that's, summarizing the amount of skill that was required that was expected from musicians at the time <clears throat> when artists like frank sinatra was active a vocal take and they had one microphone and they would get it balanced just right frank would say okay i'm ready to do it and he'd so more on the talent of the musicians and of um the lack of technology that um, that enabled musicians to do multiple takes, um, as in, no, excuse me, not multiple takes, to do uh, a take and then have the ability to fix that, which is why um, I think Rick, which is the reason why I'm assuming um, Rick brings in the next point um, about the punch in and out machine. Sing it. Come fly with me, let's float down <coughs> to Peru. Then you get into the 1960s or so, and then you have things where you have multi-track machines. You could go in if you had a mistake in a vocal part or any instrument, and you do a punch in. Oh, I don't like that word. I sang it out of tune, or I want to change this lyric. You go in and you just punch in, fix the line, punch out. Fast forward to 1998 with Cher, the Believe song. They invented this thing, Auto-Tune, that I've talked about this a million times on here, but Auto-Tune was a plug-in that would go into these DAWs, digital audio workstations. So you'd have something like Pro Tools or Logic or Ableton. What you do is you take the vocal, let's say the song's in C major. Any note in the key of C major, it would tune the note to. Well, T-Pain and people like that realized if you put it on a really hard tuning, it would make it sound like a keyboard. And that's what they did in the Believe song. So um, this part, I, I, I'm I going to say the same thing. <laughs> I think uh, Rick brought in the idea of auto-tuning as um, an advantageous and a great creative um, way um, of an accessibility of... Um, the 
technical tool known as an autotune. And the reason why T-Pain was introduced with his, um, was uh, to give an example of the creative output, um, create, yeah, creative output of making a sound, like making the voice sound like a keyboard. But at the same time, um, what I said in my previous video as well was now we have someone who could be potentially tone deaf um, be coded as with with an armor to have them um, to be, make them safe against um, the expected expected um, view of talent, you know that breath of fire, um, because technically you don't technically the technology enables people that haven't had the musical talent or haven't doesn't have the um the thousands of hours maybe put into mastering the voice um techniques um the, the technology allows that allows the, uh, allows the the people that don't have the hours in to sing um and if 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 we were to you know and and it's it's all it's again <clears throat> if we think about that it we we also have to think about how that music was popular popularized in the first place i'm talking about songs that utilize autotune um and when it was popular popularized like would you blame the listeners for enjoying um, the song that you know made them feel a certain way. I believe, um, you know, the major thing like Pro Tools or Logic or Ableton. What you do is you take the I've talked about. I think this is a great song. This a million times on here, but Auto Tune was a plugin that would go into these DAWs, digital audio tuning. This would be a they did in the Believe song. Well, then the same thing starts happening with drum parts. Guys playing a drum part, and you're like, you know what? This would be a great take of this first verse if this. So, in in the first video, I don't think I made um, a statement as to why Rick connected uh, um, connected quantizing with auto tuning. Um, I think it's on the idea that, or maybe I, um, I probably did miss the point. I, I think the reason why he even he even showed this note two was to say that you can move the notes around, and I think that was a connection that Rick was trying to make with quantizing. Why he connected? Why he brought in uh, quantizing? Of this first verse, if this one hi hat wasn't a little drag, well, let's move it back a little bit, or let's move it forward, whatever. And then you move that, and you're like, well, the snare after it kind of sounds weird because we move that forward. Now the snare sounds like it's drag, so we do that. Then you're like, well, you know what? Let's just look at the grid lines, the bar lines, and we'll just move them to that. Then you start cutting out moving them. Then they give you this tool called Beat Detective. Then you can actually quantize an entire part. So then it becomes like a drum machine. So it's not human-like. Here's an example of a quantized drum part. It's John Bonham's drum performance from Fool in the Rain that's a shuffle. Here's what it sounds like as a machine. Now here's the actual human performance of John Bonham. Notice the swing in it. Once you've quantized the drum part, it's a drum machine. It's just like superior drums. So, you know, if... This is, a, this is super interesting because technically, if in my honest opinion, if you were to give that, um, if you were to, this is just my assumption, by the way, if one was, I, I, I'm very curious to know the results of blindly testing listeners about this. If one was given a quantized um, drum with this with the song versus an unquantized um, drum part with the song and, and I'm talking about the people that don't know about the song 
um, or we can make a different example. Maybe um, maybe a quantized, um, <clears throat> maybe a song with a with a quantized uh, drum uh, drum line played by a professional, experienced uh, a drum session uh, session drummer versus um, one that's not quantized or vice versa I, I don't know which one i said first but yeah you, you get the point I, i'm just curious because at that point the argument that i'm trying to make at that point who if if the if the person doesn't realize the difference but then the song itself you know like that person really likes it and it, it comes it like belongs in their heart like who is the is the instrument is is the method of quantizing um would that be bad or would that be excuse me not bad or would it would it go against how music should sound like it's interesting now here's the actual human performance of john once you and at the same time if the person doesn't care whether or not it's quantized or not quantized um whether or not it was played by a person or not you know because nowadays um when I, I i i've seen um many comments about you know are are these drum machines um that are um made that have that um that up that's one person has programmed into sounding like a rock rock music um because it was still made by a human person right like a human repeatedly listened and made adjustments and he he or she um picked out every all the parts um versus someone actively sitting down on the drum a uh, drum set and actively playing with um hours of experience uh, with hundreds thousands of hours of experience behind you know where where does that where, like what about that you know ultimately if the music sounds you know good um because because um when he, and he's gonna he's gonna mention the drum machines you quantize the drum part it's a drum machine it's just like superior drums So what started happening in the year 2000 or so is that everyone started quantizing their drums because the budgets to hire session guys like Josh Freeze and Kenny Aronoff. And um, regarding drum machines, um, I know many, many. Um, one example I can think of is Michael Jackson. Groundbreaking artists utilized drum machines for their for their music but at the same time in my opinion the drum machines had um the, the, the songs that um the drum machines used had a very unique um unique sound of their own you know like what, 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 what about you know what about that but at the same time i think what the overall okay so I think it's it's more on it's more on how the world views views um how the world essentially how how the innovation essentially on and and um unmistakably change innovations change the perspective of us how we perceive creation and i think that's the overall um under underlying reason as to why um you know um not gonna, oh my god okay let me let me just get back to that uh, and later but it's it, i'm gonna connect it with the the um the the with the arrival of the internet in 1995 it's when um 
let's say for an example, I make this YouTube video, um, and I have a friend in Japan, and you know how what, like how am I gonna how am I gonna like what am I gonna do to you know, excuse me not what am I gonna do? It's how fast I can reach him or her, my Japanese friend, um, with the video that I just made. So it, the moment I up the moment I get a notification on YouTube saying that my video has been uploaded and it, and it is now public, I can e I can just easily copy um, the link of my video and I could send it to my friend. And my friend, if he is available or he's on his phone at the very moment, he can see my message and he can immediately go in, and it it'll, it won't even take him a minute to access my video. Versus, you know, um, before the in before the create the advance of it, the internet, um, the excuse me. Before the before the advent of the internet, if I wanted to meet, if I wanted to talk to someone from a different country, I firstly would have had to have um, a connection in Japan or someone someone nearby, someone who that I know um, in the states who knows how to get to someone in Japan, and I would then have to talk to. Uh, it, you know, it, it will be a lot of uh, it will be a lot of steps. It will be a lot of steps for me to talk, um, to get a uh, to get a you know a, a form of conversation. And the conversation wouldn't even be, you know, it, it wouldn't even be like how you and I are talking and listening, how how you are listening to me right now, my voice, it, and you know how my face looks like. It wouldn't even be like that. It would just be completely epistolary. epistolary where um it's i don't know if i said that word right epistolary epistolary it's like regarding only uh, only solely on on letters conversation on letters on, let me just let me search it up so i don't yeah so conversation would be epistolary and you know so th think about the think so think about the value of that having a pen pal having um having someone from around it, it it unconsciously brings about the question of appreciating um a connection between people does that does that sort of connect with you with um how modern dating is like for kids in their uh, late tens in their twenties maybe in their thirties um and how kids um and you know teenagers view um relationships with each other it's it's very different and i hope i i'm making a valid uh, connection there um as i think that's ex that's essentially what rick is trying to say in regards of how music is becoming severe the the value of music is um, drooping down precipitously. It's, th that's the overall message, in my opinion, of what Rick is trying to say in the video. And a few times I was a little confused because um, sometimes uh, when I was replaying this video for, um, on specific parts, because I, I just couldn't, my comprehension is not very good with uh, bringing, getting in the ideas. But I, I think that's what it is. So overall, I definitely did not summarize it uh, well enough, but it's about the value of music in, in, in similarity with how um, the value of people, people's relationships, uh, you know, it changed severely, you know, let's say from 1990 when, um, when epistolary uh, relationships and pen pals were very common. Um, or were not very common, were common, versus now in the twenty in twenty twenty four, where if I want to meet someone or talk to someone in Japan, I would have to firstly, you know, like I would have to worry whether or not it's a scam or not. You know, you know what I mean? Like I would have to worry if this person's actually Japanese and actually, you know, um, actually knows the language. I don't know if he's using Chat GPT to maybe get some money out of me, like. You know, and I'm not saying the pen pal is also 
you know, and one could argue the pen. Well, what about pen pals? Pen pals could be also、um, scammers.、Um, you never know.、Um, and I'm not saying that there weren't, but kind of. It's it's like a different thing, and I I, I can't. This is all just silly assumptions because I wasn't, you know, I didn't use pen pals in the night in in the nineties before the internet, nor have <clears throat> nor have I been scammed by、uh, someone. So I, I'm not trying to make this a personal thing, obviously, but it's just from the it's just from some of the articles that I've read online, some of the stories, and you know, and me just attempting to understand that aspect. But yeah, and 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 in similarity with just how、um, people are, ex-、um, how the modern dating, you know, has been like it's like it's like window shopping, you know, dating apps. It's just like window shopping.、Um, that's what that's what what my friend said once about dating apps and how、um, how our colleagues and acquaintances perceive it、uh, in such a way. Uh, but yeah, let's dive in a little bit now. I, I I'm not really I I didn't really understand Rick's point about the the drum kit.、Um, let me as in when he introduces all、um, the how. Actually, I'll, I'll just I'll just shut up for a second. Happening in the year 2000 or so is that everyone started quantizing their drums because the budgets to hire session guys like Josh Fries and Kenny Aronoff went away, and you'd have to use the crappy drummers. I mean, some bands would have good enough drummers to play, but you typically have these crappy drummers that you'd have to fix their parts. And once you fix their parts, you start moving the bass around, you start moving the guitars around, and then you pretty much have sterile, generic, quantized rock music that has no vibe at all. The other thing that people realize is that it's really difficult and time-consuming to record a drum set. You need a studio and a lot of gear. Look at all these mics. So he's, I, I think, from what I think right now, I think the reason why Rick, this just came into my head. <laughs> notice, notice how thirty seconds ago I didn't know what he was talking about. Why he included. Um, the、uh, the why drum sets were expensive,、uh, recording drum sets was expensive. But I think the overall idea was to、um, provide value,、uh, you know. And he, because he literally just said、um, the budget for hiring、um, professional drum set,、uh, drum music session musicians,、um, it, the the budget for that went away for、um, for. You know, and and I didn't do my own research behind this. I I didn't know. I don't know why. I, I guess just record labels and the、uh, the managers or whoever hires、um, uh, session musicians just wanted to swallow the bonus for themselves. I I don't know. But this this. But in my first video, I also say how you know like. This is definitely on the fault of whoever decided to cut this, because now they have let this, um, let quantizing, you know, become a common thing. Or maybe they just didn't see the reason of hiring、um, a real talented drummer, because they probably thought, you know, like, you know, like people don't know, people wouldn't know. Enough drummers to play, but you typically have. And it's technically what's happening with、um, snacks. This, this is a little weird, but with inflation, you know, maybe ten years ago, no, maybe not ten. That's maybe five, five years ago.、Um, the snack that had about sixty-five, the the weight of that snack, was, which was about sixty-five grams,、um, now it only weighs about forty-nine grams, and they're still selling it with the same. Price maybe a little bit no with a price that's higher in twenty twenty four. People you know people don't know. Have these crappy drummers that you'd have to fix their parts, and once you fix their parts, you start moving the bass around, you start moving the guitars around, and then you pretty much have sterile, generic, quantized rock music that has no vibe at all. 
The other thing that people realize is that it's really difficult and time consuming to record a drum set. You need a studio and a lot of gear. Look at all these mics. Now you can put up three mics and get a drum sound. You can put up two mics and get a drum sound, but to get a professional drum sound, you tend to mic up the different instruments. I got two mics on the bass drum. I got a mic on this Tom, mic on that Tom, mic on the ride, two mics on the overheads, two mics on the snare here. I actually have three mics on the snare and a mic on the hi-hat and I have a couple room mics. It's hard to record it well. Not only is it hard to play the drums well, but it's hard to record the drums well, and you have to have training. It's not easy to do. You have a great ear. You got to know how to tune them. You got to know what is a good snare sound from a bad sound. You got to know if the toms are ringing too much. You got to know if they're in the right pitches, all this kind of stuff. There's so many decisions to make. Now, some of you are out there thinking, what are you talking about, Rick? You don't need to have a good sounding room. You can have a crappy sounding room. You don't even need good mics because you're going to just replace everything with samples. Well, where do you think samples come from? They come from people that know how to record them. That one was for free. It's difficult to get a good guitar sound. You have to have a good sounding amp. You have to have good sounding speakers, good microphones that work well. Most people now just use amp modelers. They plug into their computer. They pull up their program. Everything is done for them. They've already been pre mic pre-selected. They're all using the same algorithms. They can create great sounds. They're so easy to use. Doesn't take any skill at all, but it doesn't take any creativity either. Then of course you have the MIDI. See, this is, this is the part that I uh, oversaw. Um, I think... Rick was, um, from how I understand it now, um, and it probably may, it's most definitely going to change if I re decide to redo, redo this video after rewatching a few times, um, my recording, by the way, this thing, this, the Rick, the video that I'm recording, um, when I, when I re-listen to whatever gibberish that I, <laughs> that I say, that I've said, um, it's, 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 it's a little, you know, he, he talks about, um, let me just rewatch this part. You got to know how to tune them. You got to know what is a good snare sound from a bad sound. You got to know if the toms are ringing too much. You got to know if they're in the right pitches, all this kind of stuff. There's so many decisions to make. Now, some of you are out there thinking. So he's saying the, the person who oversees the drums, the recording of the drums, um, who ultimately is the one responsible for saying, okay, this is a good... Like this is good enough to be published for the public's listening because he has the ears, he has the training of knowing how each, <clears throat> how proper, um, how, how a drum is supposed to sound, right? How it's supposed to sound. Um, but now with the accessibility and the easiness of um, of just recording with the preset, um, with the presets pre uh recorded lines the drum lines a, a, a complete beginner can access that and just say okay well it's good enough but, you know it's it's you know it's it sounds it sounds very similar to what i would uh, what i would listen to in in um in a in a modern rock band music um, or even something from a long time ago. I don't know, but it sounds good enough. So I'm going to probably um, maybe fix that around a little bit and then I'll make, you know, my line because it's always been my one of my goals to make a song that I can express my own self and creativity. You know, that's great. But I think he, I think um, Rick is also, remor um, not remorseful, he's wistful about people not putting in that effort and this ultimately ties in with i think what rick says in the end about a hundred thousand songs a day being added to spotify in 2023 and that's an ex that's an incredibly myriad that's i'll cancel out incredibly it's a myriad number of of songs is incessantly just just free falling down on um on, on on the island of spotify um and 
yeah, I think it's just it's more on the idea of people, you know, with the accessibility of people of of, of excuse me of uh, music, music making, uh, producing. Uh, with another example of that, the guitar, you know, the guitar amp um, or uh, the pre, uh, guitar amp um, VSTs making um, people, you know, sound. You can make your piano sound like an inc- uh, If your piano can be a media controller, you can make it sound, have um, a, a, a pretty damn good guitar electric guitar sound you can move around with it and you can be like holy shit that sounds like oh that sounds cool that sounds awesome it gives that um it gives that happiness you know like you're actually creating something that sounds pretty uh pretty uh good like some something that you may hear on on the um on 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 spotify yeah and again, I'm connecting with um, the wistfulness of um, of what Rick may be hinting in this in his uh, video um, about it takes no creativity because everything is sort of just planned out. Everything that's you don't even know how to um, properly mic um the drums the amps like you don't have to know any of the hard stuff that is the hard labor and everything that's required and how precious excuse me i didn't mean to do this in in a bad way but that's the word that i was looking for how precious um i'm (laughs) i forget about it but yeah how precious the process is thinking what are you talking about rick You don't need to have a good sounding room. You can have a crappy sounding room. You don't even need good mics because you're going to just replace everything with samples. So, and this is another, I think the reason why Rick even brought this um, example was to, I guess, show the ignorance of, um, of, of, of some of the people that are too, that are too familiar with samples. Well, where do you think samples come from? They come from people that know how to record them. That one was for free. It's difficult to get a good guitar sound. You have to have a good sound. See, this is... <laughs> damn, I'm having so much fun. God damn. Oh, my goodness. At all. But it doesn't take any creativity either. Then, of course, you have the MIDI packs that you can buy if you can't play keyboards. So it'll just have pre-programmed chord progressions. Because for some reason, people can't just kind of space their fingers out and learn to play a few chords like that. Or maybe just experiment. Huh, what is this? What is this? Yeah, so uh, it's it's super it's it's super e- like uh, he's he's really, in my opinion, um, having this thought with the with um with how. how it is now you know how it is now because i i because you know in my opinion the the technology itself allowed a very and this is this connects with what i was saying before about the arrival of the internet and how the arrival of the, uh, the smartphone um the arrival of you know having the access to the entire world in the palm of your hands um has been unknowingly draining out that sense of friendship because you know when you when you watch old movies um you know about about kids who were about um about high school friends who were who are separated you know like now you can communicate if your friend went to a school in California and if your friend um goes to a school in 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 um in Rhode Island and you're and you're in uh, like I don't know like Idaho and you know like like connecting is it's not a problem like you wouldn't think that oh hey damn I wanna I wanna talk to that friend in California today hmm 
I'll just hit him up on the messenger, you know, or I'll, I'll like I'll FaceTime him or something, you know. So it's 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 that ease, it's that easiness, you know, um, versus maybe before the internet and um, communication that allowed quick, efficient, electronic um, method of communicating. Before that was invited, uh, invented. Excuse me. That before that was invented, you physically had to. You know, it, it required a lot of steps, and I think that's what Rick also um, wants to talk about. Wants to trans. Uh, wants to translate to us about the importance of um, how it took him. Uh, you know, arduous. Uh, it, how it took him labor. How it. You know. It took him. Um, it's precious time to have you know to have that mindset of valuing music versus now you know I I can literally just find an album in in an instant an album that I've never heard of before I'm like um I'll listen to this today and then I just plug it in and I'm just like uh, 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 and then you know 30 40 minutes go by I'm like hmm okay that was uh okay like you know like that that's why that's why in my other videos i i try my absolute best i try to like understand and i try to listen and listen and listen try to get that you know trying to get that self back trying to like you know i i've never i don't personally um think i was ever away from music i i've been granted i haven't been exploring exploring but i've been listening to practically like the same i've been in the same circle like, and it's been it's been festered in my if i if i can if that's a nice way to put it you know i i've i have this very festering uh, personality where i am completely satisfied with eating something um with not really trying new but discovering something new inside something that i've listened to a thousand times and you know i i i, I came across this mindset uh one day of uh, last year of trying out all these different music that's out there um, and it still stands but it's like it's like that it's like trying to just you know actually value um, you know and I don't know what actually value means but trying to really put myself in there and trying to have a different perspective on music than I did than I um, you know than I may I may have I, I like I don't want to forget that, and which is probably which is one of the reasons why I am um, doing these videos in the first place. Not this one. Talking about the ones that I've been doing for um, almost a, for a few months. Well, that was a really uh, unnecessary, and I don't remember half the things that I said. So let's just uh, um, because with the presets now, it's it really is convenient it's super convenient it literally has every every chord that essentially pushes you away it it doesn't require you to you know if every known chord um there definitely is probably there definitely is a preset that has all the chords and you can just it, it it's it's pre-recorded or it's um or it's on um, on, on a MIDI file so you can um, so you, you don't have to it, it, it takes you away technic kind of in a way it 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 um, unconsciously and uh, not unconscious unknowingly you know creates a wall <laughs> between you and you know the piano I think that's what Rick is attempt, uh, attempting to say in the early 2000s, labels stopped signing. If, if, if that happens, it kind of, you're just like, huh. Uh, I wonder what, I wonder what this does. I wonder what this black note in between these white keys do, do like, you know, do. And, you know, it's, it's the overall mindset, the overwhelming mindset um that is affecting people like like what i just said about about um smartphones um essentially bringing down the social um 
value of friendships and relationships because of how easy it is to freaking see new people like it's like right there like you know like god any rock bands essentially because it was way too resource intensive it was far easier to sign artists that could make their own music using a laptop and a microphone right. why is this a bad thing so since labels stopped signing rock bands essentially because it was way too resource intensive. It was far easier to sign artists that could make their own music using a laptop and a microphone. Why is this a bad thing? Well, so that's really on the, the, the record labels because they just wanted to get more profit. You know, it's the same thing as, it's the same thing as, you know, like let's say they, there's a job that, um, that uh what do you call it that a, that a person can do but then um you can hire an ai that it oh fuck you can hire <laughs> excuse my french <clears throat> you can hire an ai that essentially um short like it cuts the cost by a third so let's say it costs about seventy thousand dollars um a year uh, to do this job, but an AI, it will cost like, I don't know, like 20, 20, like 25, 25 ish, 23, 25. Just, let's say it costs about that. Companies are going to do it. Like, companies don't give, <laughs> like, they're going to do it. And I think that's, that's the problem. Well, let's start with the creative dependency on technology limits the ability of people to innovate. I start with the creative dependency on technology limits the ability of people to innovate, I believe. Could be wrong about that. Maybe it helps them innovate. I don't think so, though. So, so I wish, I wish Rick was more specific on, you know, instead of just saying the technology, like, it, 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 saying the technology gets in the way or like it limits the creative uh, that thing well let's start with the creative dependency on technology limits the ability of people to innovate I like I, I, I wish what he was saying because um, like I, I wish he had a specific time or because as a whole, I think that is, it's, it's very hard for me to believe saying that creative dependency in techn on technology limits, um, what would it, li limits the freedom, li limits. I believe. Technology limits the ability of people to innovate. I believe. Yeah, limits the ability to people to, limits the ability for, for people to innovate. Like, I would understand if it was, like, like recently when, um, maybe in the past five, six years, but it's, 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 it's very hard for me to believe that in, you know, let's say 1980s or 1990s, because accessibility, and like I said, this really, this, this this was the part that I felt um, Rick uh, it, it, Rick's convers Rick's argument may have been um, a little may have been stronger if he had if he had mentioned the time um, about time um, of where what he said about creative dep creative dependency in technology limits the oh God my my memory is my bad. Leave. Could be wrong. Limits the ability of people to innovate. Yeah, it limits the ability to people to lim uh, to innovate. It. Uh, it would make sense if he had a he had a time period, on where he he believes it has been the strongest that creative dependency. Um, 
um, because the surroundings, how the world operates, and what the big thing is, and all the it, it's very interconnected. It's never just one thing um, happening. It, it everything in the world, everything is in, influenced by many things. Um, yeah. I believe. Could be wrong about that. Maybe it helps them innovate. I don't think so, though. The homogenization of music. The over-reliance on similar tools, as I just brought up with... See, the like, I, I wish he... I wish he... I wish he took a more solid stance instead of saying, I don't think so, or I don't know, I'm not sure. Innovate, I believe. Could be wrong about that. Maybe it helps them innovate. I don't think so, though. The homogenization of music. The over-reliance on similar tools, as I just brought up with the amp models, creates a lack of diversity. I think that leads to music becoming more formulaic and people just following trends of using certain types of sounds. This is why these trap beats have been in vogue for the last 20 years. People just, they know they work, so they just keep using yeah, them all. so they just copy what sounds, you know, what's been accepted by the, by the, um, by the general media, general public. You know, um, if they want to sound as closely as possible to um, a song that has had over, over 500 million streams, because they don't want to, you know, it's, it's, it's that very common um, phrase. Why, why, why change something that's what that works? For time, quality versus quantity. This is a big, big thing. Okay, so the easier production makes the process go faster, which creates an oversaturation of music, making it harder to find really exceptional things. So there's that argument of you know how people complain, saying that yo like, dude, every trap song sounds the same, or every rap song sounds the same, or you know every rap lyrics, like nowadays they sound the same. It's 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 that interesting standpoint because artists could be uh just doing the things that they believe the public will like but um the public um some some avid listeners of that genre want something new like they're like dude you did this thing like five years ago like you're talking about the same thing for like almost 10 years um and but the song's been you know it, it's been it's 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 not as popular as it was but people still buy it and people still listen to it you know and it still it brings food to the table so it's like I don't, I don't, I, it's like like they're both responsible in my in my opinion as ted joya talks because about the people that he um because there are P, uh, listeners that like that are comfortable and they love the new newly released music out in this clip this is spotify's way of using ai they have ai songs to find really exceptional things as ted joya talks about in this clip this is spotify's way of using ai they have ai songs they attribute them to people that don't exist and this allows them to take royalties that would go to musicians and keep them for themselves on the ai front related so i i didn't understand why this short segment was included um maybe i'll have to watch this again but I, I i'm just i'm just because he talks about this is spot of music making it harder to find really exceptional things right. as ted joya talks about in this clip this is spotify's way of using ai they have ai songs they attribute them to people that don't exist and this allows them to take royalties that would go to musicians and keep them for themselves see this this is i i don't i don't i don't i don't understand um as in, I, I don't, I don't see the re I don't see the relevancy. Maybe I, I just, maybe that part just went over my head. 
on the AI front related to music. is too easy to make. I made a video last week called I Told You This Was Gonna Happen and I played some songs off Udio and I was saying how my kids could detect that they were AI songs but other people could not. Well, it just came out. All three major labels are suing AI startups for copyright infringement. Universal Music Group, Sony Music and Warner Music are suing Suno and Udio for copyright infringement because guess what? They're using all their music to train these AI models. Well, of course they are. How else are they going to train it? Now, companies like Universal are not doing it for the good of their music to protect their copyright owners. What's going on here is they just announced that they're partnering with a company called SoundLab to make AI models of their artists for themselves. They can use this SoundLab plugin in Pro Tools or Logic, and you can sing your own voice and replace it with one of their artists like Drake or Taylor Swift or Billie Eilish, or whoever agrees to this. And I guarantee you all these labels are going to do that because they want to own the AI versions of these songs. Whether you create it or whether they create it, they're going to own it. That's, you know, that's fucked. <laughs> oh, my God. And and I think, um, I, I definitely, I think I meant, no, I, def I didn't definitely, I don't remember, but I, I'm pretty sure I did mention how record labels are, pretty much the ones that are just fucking that up fucking uh that you know like what the f pretend pretend you made this song and you know your your voice your voice is like that final shine that final glossy shine that goes into the the words that you that you may have uh, written the lyrics um but now you know like like people can use their own voice to do that it's 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 a very thought in inducing situation because now where is the respect um like where is that respect like of of the singers of the musicians if one wants to argue saying that well i'm still listening to their music i'm listening to um you know their song it's like it's like that it's like that it's it's right now i'm i'm comparing it with the uh the ship of theseus you know of and it's 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 not it's not related but it's like you know you replace the ship with you know your own you know let's say the parts that you replace the ship with so let's say the ship itself is the the artist's original work and then you replace the the ship with uh with your with parts of that that belongs to you let's say and over time you replace it and you replace it with parts that are yours and then none of the parts of the original ship is there but then the idea of the ship is which wouldn't have existed if um if the original parts were uh there in the sh in the shape of a in the shape of a ship like which is the original and can you can you still call that ship an original um original ship because the idea is still there well i guess the argument is um flawed because technically you can't say i feel like you can oh, actually can you Maybe it's too far fetched. I don't know. I, I just thought of it. I just thought of it in my head. I th I think that's a pretty interesting uh, image, though.
And just to show you how easy it is to model someone's voice with AI, I'm speaking to you through a voice modeling program called Eleven Labs that was trained on my voice over a four week period. So for those of you that keep writing to me every day, I get about 20 of these a day and they always start, Rick, I wrote a song that I think could be a hit. I used AI to hear it because I know nothing about making music. That's literally from an email I got yesterday. This I wrote a song that I think can be a hit. I used AI to hear it because I know nothing about making music. So I don't, I don't think I properly understood it on my previous video, but on um, what Jeff said, but I'm, I'm assuming he used, so this is how I understand it now. He used AI to make the song and he, he heard it, he heard it himself. Um, because he knows nothing about making music so where so this brings down to the original because it goes right down after this part it goes down to the second segment of this video but it, it ties in with why he brought Frank Sinatra because Frank Sinatra you know while he didn't while he had songwriters um, and other composers um, and other, you know, he didn't he didn't make the entire entire um, music, but he had his own very unique, distinctive color, and that was his um, voice, the human voice. Um, but this one, someone could argue, but but you know, that's that's his idea. That's Jeff's specific, his own very human like idea. Only just we just had a, the technology aid him to bring it to bring it to life you know and we can discuss that in 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 a deeper level saying that well where is the humanness you know anyone can think if i can think and if i can think about writing a book if i think about this plot about writing a book and then ai makes the book for me and then i spend maybe a few hours not even not even for myself <laughs> and then i use ai to check the spellings for everything to make sure it's double is correct the grammar is all correct it probably it, it most definitely is not on the first try but we just do it anyways because of the human you know human quality to check if if there are if it's our innate nature to check if there are any mistakes which human like quality and then when we check that um, and then we then used, uh, then we then use AI to help us summar summarize that, and we read the summarized version of a maybe two hundred and fifty pages of, uh, of 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 information, and the su the summarization is about a paragraph, um, and we and we read that and say, oh okay, the plot is pretty good enough. Okay, let's publish that. Does that make me a writer though? You know, like. Does that make me a writer? Just because I had the idea? It's a very interesting, uh, you know, thought. Uh, and this ties in with uh, what, what Jeff was saying. I mean, that's Jeff. <laughs> with Rick was saying, uh, excuse me, regarding uh, how every, everything is just immensely available with the presets um you know about having every chord available in our an arsenal and it really ties in with the tech the re our recent technology rather than rather than a gradual um um what's that what's what's that word uh it starts with this convenience with gradual convenience that technology allowed us to um, to f um, help our help our uh, mind, it has become so it has now become so convenient that we don't even have to think to make music. Well, we don't have to think <laughs> because I know nothing about making music. That's literally from because it's it's possible to make music without thinking. 
an email I got yesterday. This reminds me of the best AI critique I've seen. Creative AI tools can be seen as sophisticated plagiarism software as they do not produce genuinely original content, but rather emulate and modify existing works by artists subtly enough to circumvent copyright law. Yeah, and, and, um, and he's talking about how um, music making AI softwares like Udio and uh, Suno, they utilize data from um, many, many songs and, and many uh, existing songs. And most probably the very first um, database or type of types of data that the that the creators of those ai wanted to uh, wanted the machine to feed on was probably the 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 best the albums the top 1000 albums or like the the best selling um music in each year um everywhere in the world and it's you know it's gonna sound good because it's it's taken the it's taken the you know it's taken something that's been a top it's been a hit in 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 the span of many generations us well what's funny about that is that was act it's, it's you know i on the first watch i don't think i got into i got this into um examining um but this is I, i'm repeating myself but this is super fun actually written by chat gpt <laughs> Act two, music is too easy to consume. So this is the water faucet in my kitchen. But imagine this is streaming on Spotify or Apple Music. You can turn it on, you can turn it off, but what's going on in the stream of water is all of the music that's on these platforms. Now imagine this is one artist entire output, their entire catalog. Might be the police, could be Billie Eilish, could be Led Zeppelin, the Beatles. And then this dropper is each of their songs. One, two, three, four. Oh, I just did a whole record there. And eventually you exhaust their whole catalog. When I hit this and I start the stream, the music has very little importance if you think about it this way. It goes from the faucet, down the drain, out to the sewer, where it's recycled again. Except in this case, the music is not recycled like it is through the sewer. There were 100,000 new songs added every day in 2023. Let me just repeat that part. ...is each of their songs. One, two, three, four. Oh, I just did a whole record there. And eventually, you exhaust their whole catalog. When I hit this and I start the stream, the music has very little importance if you think about it this way. It goes from the faucet, down the drain, out to the sewer, where it's recycled again. Give me one second. <laughs> I'm just trying to. I, I'm just trying to re-understand. So it's. I I, I don't know if I did uh, mention this before, but I think. He's referring to the f how fast, how fast, um, you know, um, music is like this stream of water. Like you wouldn't be able to tell, you know, just by grabbing, um, you know, grabbing, um, taking a taking um, a cupful of water. You wouldn't know if that contains an album of a beautiful uh, and popularized album um like uh like the police um prince michael jackson um led zeppelin and and and, and so on beyonce and so on because it moves so fast like you wouldn't notice which one is good i think that's what um rick is trying to say 
entire so it's just very output, easy their and entire catalog fast. might be the police, could be Billie Eilish, could be Led Zeppelin, the Beatles. And then this dropper is each of their songs. One. Or he's relating to the, the size of one droplet versus an entire stream, endless stream of water. How quickly, you know, the size difference is, 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 is just lost. One, two, three, four. Oh, I just did a whole record. Because this, because the water goes, it starts from the faucet and then goes down to the, to the, the drainer and then it stays and, and then it goes to the sewers where it is recycled. But then he's saying that it is, the music just stays in the sewer. It's not recycled. I think that's what he is saying. So like the, the music that could be potentially beautiful and should be um, looked at with attention just gets lost it's like seeing bits of emerald or bits of topaz or opal you know like it's going it's coming from the freaking water faucet but it's just it's lost in the um in the sewers and people aren't people don't know about it because um it's too small there and eventually and you exhaust their whole catalog when i hit this and i start the stream the music has very little importance if you think about it this way it goes from the faucet down the drain out to the sewer where it's recycled again except in this case the music is not recycled like it is through the sewer there were a hundred thousand new songs added every day in 2023 to streaming platforms that's more than one song per second for the entire year by comparison when i was a kid if I wanted to buy this Led Zeppelin II record, I had to get a job or borrow money from my parents to buy it because I wanted to own it. I wanted it to be in my collection. This album here, Pat Metheny, New Chautauqua, I paid eight bucks for brand new with the money that I made by bagging groceries at Topps Grocery Store in Fairport, New York. You actually had to expend energy riding your bike or walking to your job, working your shift, getting your paycheck at the end of the week, depositing it in the bank, getting money out, going to the record store, buying the record, bringing it home, playing it, listening to it a bunch of times, going over to your friend's house, sharing it with them. When a kid opens Spotify and clicks on on a song, it's just they can easy, just skip to the so... next one if they don't like it. Think about this. All of the music that so with with what I said before about the process of um, meeting someone from a different country or talking to someone from a different country, because it has more value, I'm, I'm more likely, and um, because I value uh, because of the value of that relationship and of my value of human relationships in the first place. Um, like the likened possibility of that. Um, I'm more inclined to tell my friends with, you know, a, with maybe a different human relationship with each other um, about the pen pal. And I think with that, um, with Rick's example of, of just the ease of scrolling and looking for a new album or a new song by, by curated play, uh, playlists. It's about, it's like, it's about that. Like, that, that like, like the sharing of, of the album by, by people. Instead of, you know, listening, instead of recommending um, playlists, like, hey, this playlist is pretty good for working out. Or, hey, this playlist is pretty good for, you know, instead of recommending an album, be like, hey, this album is a great experience. Um, you know, it talks about, it talks about the, the potential breakup um, between you and yourself, you know, it, it, or maybe evokes your teenage memories 
and um, it, it makes you realize how fragile we all are or how beautiful we all are and we still have that 16 year old inside us we just need you know different experiences to kind of help us revoke and reawaken that that feeling feeling of exhil- exhilaration and and you know like listening to the lyrics be like you know like 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 fuck like shit like damn that's good but you know it's 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 kind of he's t- i think rick is talking about the uh, a, a different uh, general view of music with the ad- advent of um music uh platform apps or whatever you call exist. Spotify. the release has been uploaded to spotify or apple music is available for 10.99 a month i'm talking about all of michael jackson's music all of acdc pink floyd whitney houston tupac kendrick lamar juice world eminem dr dre all the works of beethoven of bach of mozart of stravinsky of shostakovich of charlie parker of john coltrane of miles davis brad I think Bach has about a thousand and one hundred twenty, twenty one um works. Approximately it takes if you were to listen to uh, uh there I think uh, how many CDs were there? I think there were about hundred sixty something CDs. It, the whole complete complete work of Bach is available and I think it's about hundred sixty CDs or a little maybe a little more. But it's less than 100, 180. I think it was like 165 or 164. Um, and each CD is about an hour long. So it would take you closely six months to listen to everything that Bach wrote. It's been one of my uh, one of my goals. If I had to prop, if I had the time and the, well, that's a stupid excuse. Yeah, but uh, if I can carefully resource my time allocate my time it was what i wanted to say um but it's like it's like that unknowing you know like maybe let's say 50 years ago let's say 50 years ago i had and this is this kind of connects with um with um what what i've talked about regarding uh, pen pals and um regarding internet and all that but let's say 50 years ago, I had um, that CD and that was all that I, you know, that was a, a, listening to music was one of the big priorities. Like, I, I'm a little saddened at the potential how I would be, how I may have understood um, or how I may have enjoyed music without the distractions i don't know that's just a little personal thing because you know and i I could listen to maybe eight hours of music a day if i really wanted to and that's from literally only listening to music like not doing anything else not going on my phone and then like browsing or you know, maybe I may look at a, I may I may look at um, paintings, but yeah, I don't know. I I wish I was rich, man. I I wish I had, I wish I had, you know, the money where I can just do that because I I honestly would. <sighs> Meldo, Pat Metheny, Keith Jarrett, all of that, ten ninety nine a month for the price of what we used to pay for one album. It's all available on these streaming platforms, which is why music is not as valued by young people. There is no sweat equity put into obtaining it, having it be part of your collection, having it be part of your identity of who you are. These are the bands I believe in. These are the artists that I love and I'm gonna share it with my friends. I'm gonna bring that record to school. I'm gonna play it for my friends after school. We're all hanging out reading the back cover of it and seeing who played on it. These things meant something. What was on here meant something. So it's, it's also on, you know, it's, it's like that, it's like that thing where, um, where, you know, I, I've seen arguments of, you know, why do you read books? Why don't you, or why do you read, why do you like watch movies? Why don't you just 
because there are there, are, you know, it, it's. I personally disagree with this with that sort of content, but on YouTube there are content where um, people actively narrate what the hell is happening in the movie. Um, you know, like I mean, like do you, do you, like you know, it's. It's very weird for me, you know. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to condemn such content, because, um, because it it surely brings joy in many people, and and it's a great uh, compliment to people that want to watch movies with someone else, but they may have um, no friends that enjoy watching movies. Excuse me, um, and you know about books. Some people are like, you know, why, like, why do you, like, why do you read books? Why don't you just read summaries that are done by AI, or something like something like this? Like music, um, someone could say, you know, like, what is the point of reading? You know, what is the point of reading things in the back? Like, you know, like, what the hell is the point of even buying a, a vinyl, like, record? You you can literally just play the f- song on the internet. Like, what is the point of spending the extra thirty forty dollars on buying a vinyl record? It's just yeah. And when 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 let's say someone tells them why, they're like, oh, I want to have the physical copy. Like it's 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 a it's a little um. Because the the reason why the person may ask why they're buying records, why they're spending thirty, forty extra dollars to do that when you can just literally listen to it online, isn't the music that's what's important? Um, and the other person could say, "Well, I like keeping, I like buying this to both support the artist or uh, keeping the keeping a physical copy." Um, and you know, like, or reading things behind, um, like exclusive things that uh, comes, ex- exclusive things that come with the record, and it's it's on the position of why um, the person who buys record labels, like, why they need to explain that versus forty, fifty years ago. When vinyl records um, uh, may have been um, a huge thing, um, no one would ask that question. They're like, "Oh shoot! Like, I haven't wanted to buy that uh, album. Like, can we listen to it together sometime after school? Or like, I can I like read like what it says in the back? Um, or, like, can I like see like what it comes like what it came with? You know, like I think that's what Rick is trying to communicate with us." Because, like, uh, like he he has more experience, you know. Like he has more knowledge about he 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 has been through the generations and he has been through the changes. Um, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not old. Um, it's a silly thing to say, um, but like I. I I'm pretty sure I, I I I consider myself to have seen um, how techno how much technology has you know like jumped. It's you know smartphones is pretty nuts. You have the entire world in the palm of your hands. It's 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 a, it's a superpower, you know. And yeah, it's just whew, yeah. By John Burns and Genesis, it was important. What I'm saying is that music has basically become valueless. If you only have to pay $10.99 a month to have access to anything, what is one song worth? You know, people tell me that they want me to make certain kinds of videos. They have these aspirational ideas, as my friend Todd calls them. 
but then they ultimately vote with their attention. Rick, make more what makes a song great videos. Make this kind of video. Or I wish that people would write songs in odd meters or use these more complex chord changes. But you know, ultimately, people will do that and then they don't listen to them because you vote with your attention. So try this, try to sit down just a couple times a week, play just a few songs. Don't look at your phone, or as I call it, the thought deletion device, because it empties your mind out. Don't look at TikTok, don't look at YouTube or Twitter, don't look at Instagram, just listen to the music, let it flow over you, think about the lyrics, think about the melody, and try to experience music like you used to. Or if you're young, try to experience music in the way that we used to. Love to know your thoughts. Hit the subscribe button, leave a comment. Thanks for watching. Um, thank you, Rick, for much respect, uh, sincerely for, um, making the video and enabling me to, you know, think it's great. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. And to, um, to everyone that has watched my video um, till the end, I sincerely thank you. Um, it's oh shoot, no. <laughs> Let it flow over you. Think about the lyrics. Think about the melody. A few songs. I Don't just want to look at your phone. Or so try this. We will do that in meters or you. Make this kind of video. Or I wish that people would write songs in odd meters or use these more complex chord changes. But you know, ultimately, people will do that and then they don't listen to them. So I think, so two things that I, I think about when he said that is people that demand, uh, that demand change or that demand that they want something, ultimately when they actually are faced with that change, uh, with that with what they want they 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 realize it and they realize that it's not it's not what they were looking for or they Im they immediately are very quick to not sit down and and give that brain give your brain that extra five six minutes of of um peace of of um of the concentration that's required to enjoy the art um and instead of instead of doing that, they just they just press backspace. Yeah, I think that that's one thing that he's talking about. And the second one is, second one is is uh, people are just not interested in in what whatever they they don't even care what a C chord is. They don't even care what a C seven chord is. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what he's. I think that's what Rick's trying to um, communicate. <sighs> now I'm gonna rewatch. I'm gonna try to rewatch my video again and see if I can get any different perspectives. But um, I know in the in the beginning of the video I said I wanted to make this video um, concise and compact. It ended up not happening, guys. The first one was I think about an hour and twenty four, twenty six minutes, and this one is just passing an hour and twenty three minutes. So. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you for sticking uh, through the end. If anyone did, uh, I sincerely appreciate you for listening to a random, uh, random guy from YouTube just blabber about another person's uh, video and another person's idea. Um, if you guys have any specific thoughts um, that I that you guys resonate or you guys disagree with me, please leave it. Leave your comments below. I'd love to hear them. Um, but that's it for now. Thank you again, Rick, for sharing a space, uh, for providing a space, excuse me, um, where I am able to uh, think, sit down and do this, think deeper. No, I wouldn't have been, most likely, I wouldn't have been able to do this if your video did not exist. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. 
Uh, and thank you again, guys, for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.